The ABC is our Library of Alexandria, and I, for one, will not stand by and watch them burn it. So now... This, I, the, the ABC is the research and development wing for the commercial networks. within the ABC and you have these sort of mavericks of free enterprise who have this delusion of themselves that they're these swashbuckling, fearless buccaneers fighting it out. You know where fear stalks the halls? In the beige corridors of Channel 7. You can smell the fear in the commercial networks because if you don't make a profit, your head rolls. And that is why the commercial networks increasingly all they do is make reality television and import American shows because they're cheap. Same. And I feel so furious because I have seen every one of our national institutions sold and junked. Yeah. Yeah. And look at things like this, the, the Commonwealth Bank, where you knew that your money was safe. Turn around to, you know, a few decades after privatisation, and they're rotting pensioners. These institutions are ours, they work for us, we built them up with our taxes, we own them. How the fucking dare they sell them? <laughs> and once they're sold, at the t at, in a time of fake news and concerns about foreign interference in Australian democracy, once you sell the ABC, you don't know where it will be on sold and you will never get it back. This is the attack on the soul of this nation. And it is up to us to fight for it and to preserve it. And as far as I'm concerned, the line is here, the line's been crossed, the fight is on. Thank you. <laughs>
to allow divisions and divisiveness about. There are many very, very passionate ABC supporters who are part of a natural conservative constituency and they should be applauded for it and they should be encouraged to feel that they are a part of this fight. Yeah. We're going to come to that again at the end. And uh, there have been times uh, when, the, uh, when the Labor Party has also forgotten its support for public broadcasting. And I'll just remind you of uh, David Hill's eight cents a day campaign in the period of the Hawke government that made him and the ABC very unpopular around some of those corridors at the time. The Turnbull government has given us another two inquiries into the ABC, one of them after constant complaints from Rupert Murdoch's News Limited and the Fairfax Group, and in a horse trade with that well-known supporter of public broadcasting, Pauline Hanson. <laughs> the other inquiry is his second inquiry into the ABC's efficiency with SBS. Two inquiries into the efficiency of public broadcasting in four years. What was wrong with the first one? And the latest efficiency inquiry we're told will be headed by a man called Peter Toner. So who is Peter Toner? Uh, who is this person that we would expect to be completely independent of the issues that he would be looking at? Well, he's the former boss of Foxtel. <laughs> a direct competitor with the ABC and SBS, a former senior executive of News Limited. Which, this is not about bias by the ABC against Liberal governments. It's a bias by Liberal governments against the ABC. <laughs> close up. I was with Four Corners in 1976, the first year of the Fraser government, and along with everyone else at the ABC, felt the sting of significant budget cuts in that first year. And those cuts were seen at the time clearly as a punishment to the ABC. I was with the 7.30 report in 1996, the first year of the Howard government, and like my colleagues saw and felt the sting of big budget cuts in its first year, punishment again. No doubt about it, and as an added bonus, we were given Jonathan Shire. <laughs> a bit like Russia from, from Russia with love. <laughs> I was back with four quarters for the first year of the Abbott government, and guess what? Cuts to the ABC in its first budget, followed quickly by Malcolm Turnbull's first efficiency inquiry, which recommended more cuts, $254 million. And that was when Malcolm Turnbull described himself to the late revered Mark Colvin on PM as the ABC's most passionate defender because it was such a vital part of the nation's politics. No one, none of our commercial competitors really wants the ABC opened up for commercial broadcasting. They don't. It would just simply be a shattering blow to their business model. What they would prefer would be simply silence. What would happen in that vacuum, in that emptiness, if, yeah, if uh, it was to be occupied by commercial broadcasters, I seem to hear the voices of Alan Jones, uh, Ray Hadley, and others of these, of their ilk being amplified through the ABC's extraordinary technical facilities. But I'll tell you what wouldn't happen. They would not begin, attempt, or bother to consider replicating any of the things we do. This is a really, really dark time. Never before have we had boards so stacked. Never before have we had reports so manipulative. Never before have we had a major political party calling for <laughs> extinction without one dissenting voice. Never before we had an organisation as loony as the IPA pulling at strings that uh, seem to be attached to every limb of the federal minister. So I'm glad to be here today and sad to be here today. It shouldn't be necessary. This battle should be won 
decades ago. But it hasn't been. And in a terrible way, the fight is just beginning. Thank you.